driver. I mean, I think you know, Tony explained to you, it's, we have to essentially train the game on, uh, on Saturn 5. Once we've done oh, that. train a particular game. Yeah, I okay. mean, it's, you, um, I think uh, the way you train it, there are, once you train multiple games, you can use those learnings in the game that you've been in, the game you to, right. essentially we'll ask the developer to give us the build, and oh, then we'll, okay. uh, we'll train that game, and then when that game then becomes available, we'll have the DLS. So here, here's the game. We're going to have a demo of this set up outside. And this, is, this technology to really uh, understand it and sort of just confirm it's doing the right thing. You really kind of need to sit there and play with it. Um, but you know, the demo is to maybe kind of get how it works. So could we, could we run into the, uh, the room with the, um, with the food and the people in it? So we have, we have that shading on. Slow down, don't make, I'm, I'm feeling really sick right here. Okay. And then suddenly you threw up on stage and everybody. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay, yeah. So they're nice and slow. So, so, so can you, can you turn, turn motion depth and shading off? And turn it on again? And turn it off again? Turn it on again? Okay. So, again, you'll, if there was a difference here, you probably it, it might be hard to see here unless we screw something up. But you'll be able to look at the data here, but later. But you can you can see here that you know at least the high level is not is not a big difference. Actually, if you can you turn it uh, turn it off again here, now turn it back on. Here. Okay, cool. Um, can we can we go to the uh, the the dining room and then we'll we'll do the visualization thing? Or is that too far away from you here? Hmm. Why don't we do it here then? How about we'll do it here? Since this is where we are, we'll do it here. Okay. Um, can you turn on the, uh, the overlay? Okay. Okay, so, so now the overlay is showing sort of in real time on this game. So basically, if you actually go look at the control panel for a second. So you can see the control panel is totally visible, so we didn't put the overlays in. That means there's no, there's no conflict after shading happening there. Um, but then the other parts of the scene, like the that sort of rail in there is like, don't move around yet, but okay. Don't make you sing. Okay. Um, so the areas of lower of lower detail are the ones we receive you know either red or yellow. Um, now I want to show motion after shading, but for that one can, can we can we turn the kind of shading down? So we turned the we turned the time adaptive shading down, so we're going to look at motion adaptive shading. So the thing you should see here, we're going to just try moving this in just a minute. We're going to move the scene a little bit. And when we move the scene, what you should expect to see is that if we're moving backwards and forwards, the stuff in the middle is not moving that much, right? But the stuff on the side can move significantly because of, the, because of the, the perspective. So what you should see is that on the side, all of a sudden the whole scene is going to turn red, right? And then in the middle it's not going to turn as much. So, so if you just move, yeah. Red. So red means that it's a, it's the lowest shading rate. Yes. Um, so red is the lowest, and then yellow, and then blue is the other. There you go. So, yeah, so, so move in, and then move out quick. There we go. Okay. Yes, okay, so pan left. Pan right. So see, so as, as you pan around, then, then kind of the whole, the whole thing is moving. The shading rate is will drop everywhere. Um, and then as you pan in and out, it's kind of the perfect. So this particular scene is so fast on, on touring that it's not giving you that much of a speed up. Um, when, when we, uh, it's one of the scenes in this game, we've kind of seen, like I say, a 15 percentage speed up um, so far. Again, it's a little bit, uh, quickly on the 1080, uh, 1080 tie, it's so fast that it's not as, 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 as big a delta as, as we'd expect to see on sort of more like a 2080 or 2070. Um, but now that developers integrated in, we're going to be working on improving it with them. Um, but uh, we're about to expect a 20 percent plus. Um, FPS speed up. When you're, when you're talking more like kind of like a 
you know, 60 FPS-ish uh, kind of content. You know, this one you can see is running like 150, 53 FPS. Um, so this is a uh, very fast chip from the industry. But yeah, so, so, so basically the idea of combination here, you know, is basically just a, a very nice speed up you can get when you get a workflow that's fairly heavy. Um, and I encourage you to look at it later, but you'll see that you know, the, the, the image looks really good, and you're basically you know, trying to give people that high FPS from the cases you care about. Or if you're running around the scene, smoke, everybody's shooting at you, you know, you want to be running at a good FPS, not a bad FPS problem. There we go. Okay. Okay, so what we're looking at here is basically you know, a, a giant asteroid field. Um, and you see on the, on, in the middle there, this is, this is 300,000 asteroids. This is 10 times more objects than, you, than you've ever seen before in any, in any game. Um, and the reason it's possible to run at 60 FPS is because this is all the GPU that's doing this, this work. The CPU here is just saying, here's an object list of all these asteroids, and, this, and GPU, you go figure it out. And the GPU in parallel will change your table to find the individual asteroids. Um, the, Actually, can you turn on the LED uh, illustration for a second there? So this is, this is the, these colors are illustrating other one of the cool things that the GPU is doing automatically here. So these asteroids are, you know, are detailed to get close to them, but if you try to draw all of them, you see, you see that max LED triangles picture there, there's three trillion triangles. So you have all these hundred thousand of objects, if they're all as detailed as they need to be when you write it close to them, we'd be drawing three trillion triangles per second. So that would work. Right, so that's where this LED calculation comes in, is that for every asteroid, the GPU is going to look at how big it is in the scene, and it's going to pick a different version of that with less triangles in it, potentially, uh, into, if it doesn't need to use the, the full detailed version. So, actually, can you switch to the, showing the version with the, like, 4C LED, a really bad one? Can you 4C LED a really, really bad LED? Like, and then, yeah, so, so this, this is the low LED, Right? You wouldn't want to draw every asteroid like this, but actually many of these asteroids in the scene actually can be drawn like this, because they're so far away that you can't see the details of them. So if you, if you turn back to automatic mode, and then turn the color colorization back on again. So if you look down at the scene, basically the, the big rocks are either purple or black, and then, then as you go backwards, you see the smaller rocks start to change to green or yellow or white for the ones that are the tiniest ones. That, that polarization here is showing what LED level is being picked by the GPU. So it's just looking at the size and picking the right LED. So the ones in the, in the back that are, that, are, uh, that are white and not colored at all are basically that like, chunky thing that you just saw, but they're so far away you can't tell the difference. So, so with, that, with that LED selection, you see we reduce from 3 trillion triangles per team down to 13 million triangles per team. So if you want to turn the LED calculation off again. So, yeah, so let's, just, let's just fly through this for 30 seconds, take it in a little bit here, so. So basically, as we're flying through, you, you can't visually see the difference, but we are actually changing LEDs as an object that gets closer to us, so if we want to swap it and do, you know, finer grain mesh, so that if you fly, like, fly sort of close to that chunky rock there, maybe the one on the left. So as you get close to it, you can, you know, you, you get to see some of that bumpy detail. So this, is, so this is a brand, a brand new tool developers are going to have that's basically going to enable them to make a scene that just looks totally different from what you've seen before. You know, the difference between having 10,000 objects, 20,000, having a whole bunch of objects. You know, uh, you know, when you're thinking about like an outdoor game, you know, lots of little army dudes running around, things like that, it's just going to look a lot more interesting. The purple values there, you basically sort of chunk through one at a time, read this one value, read the uh, four on the other side, and produce an outcome. Now, Number one, this is slow, and number two, this is kind of inefficient. The reason it's inefficient is if you look across, I'm going to go to the next, next row here, if you look at that purple, that purple matrix on the right, you're continuously rereading those values, right? You do, we're going to click through here, so, okay, so we're going to do the first planes, now we're those purple values out, right? If you use them once, now you're going to read them again. And now you're next row, you're going to read it again, you're reading it again. So you're basically, when you get a value, you read it out of registers, you use it exactly once, and throw it away. That's really inefficient. So the way texture core works is instead of doing just an FMA, it actually is one math and it does this whole math operation in one shot. So you read all the values in and in one shot, you combine them all together, 
get maximally used and shoot that value back out the bottom of, of the matrix. So we have a pretty picture here illustrating that, where you basically can see you know, this whole wave of values comes in once, we reuse it and shoot it out the bottom. So basically, with this change, you're now running eight times faster than you were before, and you're burning not very much more energy than you were burning before, because you're effectively reading values the same amount of time, but you're using them eight times more. Um, and video logo, and we, and we were a caveman one, eat a gazelle, that gazelle is running and you'd be watching it with our eye. And that's, that's how the human perception system works. And on our retina, we would see that terrified gazelle really clearly. So that's how the real world works. Now, in the more recent times, there's this thing, this invention <laughs> called LCD display. Now, LCD display doesn't work like that. LCD display has this persistent thing, right? So, whereas a real gazelle will be moving steadily, an LCD display shows that gazelle and holds it there for a frame, and then it jumps, and then it jumps again, and it jumps again. But our eye doesn't understand that. Our eye is framed. Trace, trace gazelle. So what it looks like unseen is we're still tracking the, 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 the macro motion of that of that gazelle. Um, in our retina, what it looks like is it's jumping around. Because you know, we don't know how to like hold and then jump and then jump, but it's cracking. So as, as you will see it, and then our eyes can keep moving, and so effectively it's gonna like it's gonna shift it a little bit, and then it's gonna jump and shift again. So what that ends up looking like for our retina, because we don't really see the jumping literally, is we end up basically integrating that together. So, what this means is, on an LCD display, unlike in real life, you actually cannot perceive the full detail of what's being shown to you in how it's moving. Now, this fact raises the question, if this is the case, and if in a game, the question is moving around, you really want is good frame rates, should you really spend all that shading rate on stuff you can't see, or would you be better off lowering the shading rate and getting higher FPS when there's all this action going on the scene, you want really high frame rate to track stuff. Um, and that's where this motion adapter shape comes into play. So I'm going to take the gazelle. This is all running in real time on one touring device.